Oh. I'm here in Indian Creek in the Utah desert and I'm in the paradise of crack climbing. We're kind of visiting two places on this trip. The first one being Indian Creek and the second one being the North Wash. They're both in the Utah desert but Indian Creek's the more popular well-known traveled area and then the North Wash is way off the beaten path but also has these amazing sandstone perfect splitters. So Ruby's Cafe is a really popular, what we would class as tips crack. So that is when just uh, the first joint in the finger, the first knuckle in the finger goes into the crack, but then it's too thin to then get this knuckle in the crack. And it switches corners all the way up from ever so slightly slabby through to actually quite steep through a roof. And every time you do a switch across the corner and you have to change from jamming one direction through to the other direction. That's like a mini crux. And then you have to kind of swap around, swing your body around into, into different positions to try and get past these little cruxes. One thing that's really, really key to this style of crack is that when it changes the sort of switching aspect, you'll get a little corner and that's where you want to twist your foot and get this ran smear in and it looks like it won't work very well, but actually if you get a ran smear really effective, it's almost as good as a pretty decent jam in say like a, a hand pod. And then the top section goes through this really fun uh, small roof and the hold's quite good through there and you get like some some like a trickery knee bar kind of sequence. And then you just, just trying to tweak that one in. A little just like power jamming layback to the, to the chain. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Whoa, good work. <laughs> so No Way Jose is a route in the North Wash. It's probably one of the most classic hard routes, kind of in, in the Moab area, really. It's gray and purple friends. The thing about this route is that it's actually really sustained. There's no particular hard moves on it. Fairly bad feet and every move is about as hard as the last one. Built on top of one another, by the top you kind of, you basically like really pumped out your mind. The techniques that you're typically using on No Way Jose is a combination of thumbs down and thumbs up jams. Past this joint, maybe past this joint on me, but ve very deep up to that joint. Ran smearing with the tip of your foot into the pods that you'll find. But then you get to this roof and it turns to purple front size. It's a little bit wider. And then it culminates with this proper little crux right at the top. Uh, there's a few ways that you can get around this. So I, I think some people do some like ring lock moves, um, but me and Tom actually just did one sort of like power layback move and then back into jams again. And that worked quite well. But then when you go through the roof, uh, it gets a little bit steeper and you get to these kind of like flaring hand jams. It's just so, so good, like real class of the area. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I had to fucking ring lock that. Holy shit! Oh, cliff the anchor. Queen is a little bit of a unknown route in the creek. Not a great deal of people have done this one. This was put up by one of mine and Tom's friends, Luke Mehal. He'd found this. This is like amazing, probably one of the best splitters I've seen in Indian Creek actually. It was a little bit wider than No Way Jose. Not baggy purples, but big purple uh, friends. This one is all about trying to curl the fingers into the crack and the feet are bad in this size. The wall was so clean through the steep section of the route. There weren't any uh, real footholds for the right foot and also because the crack is pretty thin um, and there aren't it's not like podded out anywhere 
uh, then the left foot wasn't very good either, so it really felt like you were cranking on your arms quite a lot. So this one is about wearing really thin, kind of pliable, soft shoes so you can get the tip of your shoe in and working that to the absolute maximum. For my fingers, it was just about okay for like, I had to fully crank them in though because they were quite big. So yeah, it was a real pleasure to go out climbing uh, with Luke and the crew up to that crag. Thanks very much to Luke uh, for taking us up and showing that route because it was a, yeah, it was a, a real classic. Ringlox is probably the most feared size, I would say, in most crack climbers because it's somewhere between a finger jam and a hand jam. And I thought the tricky thing about this route was that there was a small offset on it, so you couldn't ring lock with both hands. I ended up doing like a really bad paddle for the bottom hand and then ring locking with the top hand. This route is really defined by this amazing head wall that splits the last part of the route. And it's maybe 50 foot of continuous green friend size. So it's just ring lock after ring lock. Like I definitely found this one probably one of like the hardest on sites of the trip that I did. And it's pure endurance. No move is particularly harder than the other, but you're just fighting the burn until you just lunge into this final Thank God, hand pod right at the end of the head wall. Ah! I think this route was something that I was really pleased that I'd done some ring lock practice on a previous trip. I know I've climbed a lot of years on cracks, but I think I found with retrospect that I wasn't really that good at this particular size. And whilst I knew how to ring lock, I wasn't very proficient at it. It's definitely a lesson in continual green size and if you've got it dialed, it feels kind of okay and I felt reasonably steady on this one, but only because I put my time into practicing on that green. If you'd taken me back six months, I would have just been power screaming my way the whole way up, I think. The classic Steve Hong test piece ring lock green friend crack, I don't know, 80 ring lock moves in a row. And this is the final exam, I guess, of the green size. It's sustained, it doesn't particularly rest up, it throws hard moves all the way until the end, but you get rewarded with a lifetime tick of a route and one that's very, very hard to beat. Start of the route is a sort of slightly funky silvers and purples corner crack, which went fairly steady. I just got in a really good zone and just plugged away, kept going. I was singing away to myself and having a little chat all the way up, which is normally a good sign that I'm quite enjoying the climbing. Then right at the top where there's one last move where you throw to a hand pod, I did still manage to fumble it and I threw for the hand pod, didn't hit the hand pod and hit a ring lock below it. And after about 80 ring locks, you're not that pleased when you hit yet another ring lock. And I just about rescued it with a few little power, mini power screams and, uh, and then it was done. So some routes in Indian Creek, they might follow crack lines and then they actually break away from the crack lines. But this is actually quite good because after a number of days in Indian Creek, and you're twisting your feet in cracks and you're twisting your fingers. Uh, actually, like the skin and the joints um, all need a bit of a rest. Uh, and I did a, a few routes. Um, one which was really good was called Half Man, Half Alligator Shark, or Half Man, Half Shark Alligator. Or Half Shark, Half Man, Alligator Shark. Half Shark Man, Half Alligator. <laughs> Something, anyway. So my first go on this route, I actually messed up a little bit on the on-site because I, I committed to the rep too soon and then I couldn't clip the bolt. But on the second go, yeah, I managed to uh, 
get the, the sequence right, keep my foot in the crack, clip the bolt, and then I could commit to the arete and then climb the arete. So this one kind of reminded me a little bit of climbing on the gritstone uh, because you're fully just like pasting your feet onto the sandstone um, and also you sort of had this uh, not quite square cut, a bit better than square cut a ret and you're just like yeah like fully smearing. I felt like my uh, my years of climbing onto the gritstone came came into play there, it was good. Uh, yeah a, a really really nice route and then at the top you kind of had some crimps and a little boulder problem to then get into the final crack again. I've probably been saying for about the last 10 years that I've retired from off-width climbing, mainly because we've done a lot of them in this area. In fact, now I think we've done all of the hardest ones. So it's still occasionally tempting to go back and do a little bit of wide, come out of retirement for a day or two and suffer on the things which are friend five, friend six, or a little bit bigger size. So almost into that chimney category. And it's just really good fun. And I feel somewhat guilty saying that that was fun doing an off with because I'm going straight back into retirement again and I'm, I'm, I'm no more, I'm over it. We've got a little bit more coming from this area which is gonna really dive into some of the harder or more interesting routes that me and Pete tried on this trip. Those will be amazing. You need to watch them. Stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed. Press the button and do the little ding-a-ling-ling-ling. -ling -ling.